Guys, I can't believe I had to make this video, but there is a huge misconception on how to run the Sorcerer on the PTS. There has been so many ESO PvP content creators to give you the false impression that you should increase your maximum health on the Sorcerer, and that is dead wrong, and I'm going to show you why. Let's talk about it. Hey, welcome back guys and before we hop into uh, today's video I would really appreciate you smash that like button subscribe to the channel only like 40% of you guys who watch my content are actually subscribed so that'd be really helpful so why am I even making this video to begin with uh, well there's two reasons number one is that I am a sorcerer main at heart I come from Xbox I have over 6,000 hours on my magic sorcerer on Xbox I actually had more time on my sorcerer than most people have slash played on their entire account Sorcerer was the very first class I played. I played way back in pre-alpha when this first came out on PC when better ranks is a thing, V14, V16. If you guys don't know what that is, don't worry about it. It's old news. So when it comes to the magic of Sorcerer, I have a plethora of knowledge and experience. I know exactly what I'm talking about. I was even running Sword and Board before it was a thing. So if you guys have looked at the most recent PCS, Azos has changed the way wards work. So right now, instead of dynamically scaling from both your maximum magic and your maximum health, you can either pick one pool or the other to stack into to get increased ward strength. So this has led to a misconception of a lot of people wanting to stack into maximum health. Guys, running around with 40k maximum health, 17k maximum magic is not the way to go. I've reviewed a couple of these videos that actually show some of the tool tips from stacking into maximum health. And as a reference point, we're gonna take Crushing Shock in, for example. Some of these builds have Crushing Shock sitting at a tooltip around 1900, okay? You are not going to kill anyone in duels or open world with a baby dick tooltip like that. This is a tank meta. So when you start putting out builds that are feeding into the problem and not the solution, well, that's the problem. People new to ESO or people trying to get a grasp on new class, they think this is verbatim what you should be running. And guys, it cannot be any further from the truth. So as a PvP ESO content creator, I like to be a part of the solution and not the problem. That's why when you see all my builds, they're ranging around from 28k health to 30k health, sometimes even lower. And this is in part due to the fact that I do not want to promote this tank meta that we have where everyone runs around with 35k, 40k health. It makes the PvP experience very, very stale, and it's just not fun. This is not an eSport. There are respawns in the game. It's not like hardcore Diablo on Hell Mode to where if you die, you're going to lose all of your gear. Guys, you're going to respawn. Just run back. So here we are on the PTS, and as you can see, the tooltip on this Crushing Shock is literally double what I stated previously, and that's all from stacking Maximum Magicka. Before I start covering the build and what I have on the PTS, no, this is not optimal, but it's definitely a good starting point. I wanted to show you the tooltips on the ward sizes itself in Cyrodiil with Battle Spirit active. So when we take a look at our hard ward, we have about a 14.5k damage shield, and then when we take a look at Damp and Magicka, we have about a 10k shield. The reason I bring Dampen up is if you stack maximum health, it will not bolster Dampen Magic. I mention this because the easiest, most effective way to run Magic as Sorcerer right now is with two wards. So I'm going to quickly cover this build. No, this is not set in stone because there still needs to be some playtesting, but it's still a really good start. So ideally you won't be breaking just so you can run a Vampirism without it hindering you too much. And then your food's going to be with Sugar Skulls with the Mage Mundus. Gear wise, we are going to be running an Infernal Staff of Ancient Grace sharpened on our front bar and then Sword and Ward Ancient Grace on our back bar. When it comes to monster sets, you can plug in whatever you want here. I just want a maximum stat build, so I'm just running Swarm Mothers and also Dami House to give us two instances of both Stamina and Magicka. On the 5 piece, we are running Crafty Alfiq. We're also running 511 with the armor weights, 5 light, 1 medium, 1 heavy. And then when it comes to our mythic, Sea Serpent's Quill is the way to go. There's no reason that you should not be running this mythic on your Sorcerer because you have access to Streak. And then on the PTS, you have access to Mistform. So this slow isn't going to hinder you in any way, shape, or form. And then lastly, one piece of training. On your jewelry, you want to have everything arcane, everything recovery. When it comes to your traits, I would highly suggest stacking into Wellfit or Impen. Whatever traits you have is entirely on you. 
Hopping over into our stat sheet, now this is without continuous attack. We have around 1600 magic recovery, damn near 55k max magica, a nice 26k health threshold just in case we get caught with a ganker. Good thing we have sea serpent squirrel, so it's a lot harder to gank us if we don't have any shields up. We have 20,000 maximum stamina. This is very, very important because we have dark conversion on the build. And so you'll see more often than not, if you're running into magic issues, you should be dark conversioning a lot of your stamina over to magic to compensate. 2k crit resist and then our spell and physical resistances uh, do go up pretty decently here um, we're all the way up to 25k spell resist 22k physical resist if you're in breton you will be sitting around 29k spell resist something like that and keep in mind guys this is a throwback to the way magic sorcerer used to have to be played keeping your wards up if you're going to play your sorcerer in a max magic build you have to keep your wards up at all times so just keep that in mind so this is very basic we're in crystal fragments Haunting Curse, we're running Boundless Storm on our front bar, we're running Crushing Shock. The reason I like running Crushing Shock is because of Critical Surge. Literally every single time you weave, you're going to get a crit, which is going to heal you. We're running Streak as your gap closed in your CC, and Power Overload as your nuke. Back bar, you're running Dark Conversion, Double Wards. Again, Critical Surge is very, very strong when you pair that with Boundless Storm, because if you have enemies jumping on you, if you get any ticks from Boundless Storm critting, it's actually going to heal you for a decent amount here on tooltips around 3300. So in Cyrodiil, this is more or less like 1650 per tick. Next, we have Bound Aegis. This is going to increase your health due to the passive. This is also going to push your maximum magic very, very high. It is going to give you minor protection when you activate it, and it also gives you minor resolve passively. Now, this is pretty decent to activate uh, to get the 40% block mitigation. Just note that when you activate this, your shields do not get the block mitigation value, so just keep that in mind. And then the ultimate on the back bar is going to be Spell Wall. It's really, really nice when a couple of Night Blades jump on you. And if you can time this out correctly, you can give them a taste of their own mess and by hitting them with their own Spectral Bow. Hopping into the champion points, we have the Blue Tree. We're running Master at Arms, Deadly Aim, Ironclad, Arcane Supremacy. On the Red Tree, since we are running Double Ward on this build, you want Shield Master, Bastion, Arcane Alacrity, and Pain's Refuge. So that about does it for the build I've been working on the PTS and hopefully I cleared up a little misconception on how you should properly run your sorcery if you're actually going to have fun on the class and not be a fucking potato in open world, okay? <laughs> if you haven't already, please like and sub to the channel if you want more ESO PvP content. I do stream around five days a week, so if you want to be around to see these builds live on the PTS, definitely do so. I will be hosting a PTS tournament either this week or next week. If you're interested in that, hit me up in the Discord. The link is down in the description. And also what's down in the description is a battle submission form for PvP Top 5. I will be doing these either weekly or bi-weekly depending on the amount of clips I get and the quality of them. I'd actually be really curious to find out what you guys have been running on your Magicka Sorcerer or maybe what you theorize on the PTS. You don't have to take what I say as a gospel. This isn't a one build fits all type of thing. You can play it however you want. So with all that being said, this is Horcrux signing out. Peace.